Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. Today we'll be looking at this really nice condition rubber key ZX Spectrum that I've received as a repair job. And I'm going to be drinking some Beaver Town Laser Crush, it's a new alcohol free beer which has appeared in Tesco. Looked quite funky so let's give it a go. I've had a few of these Beckies that say assembled in Portugal. Um, I'm guessing it's something around issue 4A based on that. Let's open it up and see what we're dealing with. It's generally a good sign if the machine has all of its screws and all of its feet. This has obviously been looked after and stored well. Okay, it's an issue 4A that has been upgraded into a Spec Plus case, I can tell by the reset switch wires. The keyboard ribbon has a bit of a sharp bend in it, it might work, uh, fingers crossed it does. Doesn't seem to be any replaced lower RAM chips, I guess that's a good sign. Can see that there's another resistor in parallel over R68, that must be some kind of mod, we'll find out why that's happened. C47 is missing and we can see that it's obviously had a DC-DC power circuit mod as part of the upgrade. Now R68 with the extra resistor, um, this is related to the keyboard connector to the right of it. Here we are taking a look under the brand new microscope, check this out. Clearly this mod hasn't been done very well because it's desoldered itself, so I am just going to remove it. You can see here in the Spectrum Repair Manual, or Service Manual, that it is part of the upgrade to a Spectrum Plus case. You need to put an extra resistor across R68 to enable the stop key to work on the Spec Plus keyboard. Good news, it's a good ULA ending in a 7. These ones don't fail as often. Here we can see the DC-DC mod, or at least part of it. I'm gonna have to replace that capacitor as part of the recap, but I won't need to redo the modification. Okay, let's have a look on the underside of the mod. Well, as expected, it seems to be all in order. There's no sign of any major repairs, um, just the edge connectors looking a bit dirty. I'll be cleaning that later. Okay, before applying any power, I'm just going to check the resistance of the three voltage supplies to the lower RAM uh, to ground, and hopefully none of those are very low, because that means there's some kind of short somewhere, either in the power circuit or within the RAM chips themselves. And that looks okay to me. So I've been using this power supply for other stuff recently, so let's just uh, set it up right. I want 9 volts, and I'm going to short it out now and set the current limit to something which is going to protect the spectrum if there is any kind of a short. It was set to 3 amps, so thank god I did this check before plugging it in. I'm going to try and get it to about 0.8. And when plugged in, the spectrum is drawing 0.02 amps, which is way too low. Something's clearly wrong with our power circuit. And in fact, when I was probing around, I did detect a short between the collector and the base of the ZTX650 in the TR4 position. We've actually had this failure mode before. Uh, let's take a look on the schematic and we can see what's going on. This is where the short was detected on TR4 between the collector and the base, which means the short is either within the transistor or within the coil, at least that's the two most likely locations. Now I've never had a failed coil before, I know it does happen, but in my experience I'm going to head straight for TR4. I'll replace that first, I'll replace TR5 while I'm at it for good measure, and we should be somewhere close to back to normal. Here's our old TR4 and TR5. I'm going to pull these apart and have a look under the microscope actually out of interest. And here's our new TR4 ZTX651 and the new TR5 ZTX751. Top tip, just check the marking on it even if you got it out of a bag that says ZTX651 you might have got them mixed up at some point. Let's repeat the continuity test that failed on the old transistors, and this time we don't get continuity, which is a really good sign. And just to be absolutely sure, let's do a quick continuity test on the removed transistor. Yep, that thing was fried. I did try to open up the bad transistor, but I don't think it's possible, or at least I don't have the skill to do it without damaging the insides. Um, this is about the best I could do. 
It's definitely interesting to see, but um, I can't really glean any information from that. I'll take any excuse though to use the new microscope. Okay, I'm going to plug it in again and triumphantly we're going to see it drawing the right amount of current. Or not. 0.01 amps, well that's less than before, so I um, haven't quite fixed it yet. Back to the drawing board. The next thing I'm suspicious of is the 7805 voltage regulator. I've got a feeling that this specky's taken a hit from a reverse polarity or a bad power supply or the edge connector, so I reckon that this is a good candidate for another component that would have been hit when that happened. The legs on these things are quite thick, so do have patience when you're desoldering them. Try not to force it or you will damage the pads. Here's our replacement, and again, be careful when fitting it. You need to think about the heatsink going under it. It's not enough just to solder it flush. So you need to put this bend in the legs and get the holes for the bolt to line up just right. Okay, that's looking good. Let's plug it in and quick check on the power supply and it actually is drawing current now so our 7805 was definitely fried and now finally we can check our voltages remember we're looking for minus 5 that's given us minus 5.7 we're looking for plus 12 that's close to 14 and we're looking for plus 5 and that is also about 10% over uh, so something's wrong and in this case the thing that was broken was my multimeter uh, if your battery is low, and I did have a warning to be fair, it's going to give you the wrong voltages. At least it is for a cheap one like this. Let's give it another go on a fresh battery, and we are bang on minus 5. Brilliant. Plus 12 is pretty much bang on, yeah, that's fine. Plus 5, expecting to be perfect. Yeah, great. And we got lucky here, although the power circuit took a hit, um, we're actually passing the diagnostic wrong soak tests and we do boot properly so that's good although one problem I didn't hear any beeps during the test I'm going to do a quick beep command to check and nope nothing the speaker or part of the circuit around it is gone luckily we've had this before um, first thing I'm going to check is the ULA I don't think that's going to be the problem uh, because it's a it's a 7 ULA which is a good one but I'll pull it out and pop in a known good replacement just to be sure Cross your fingers here because it would really suck to have a ULA with such a minor fault and they're not cheap to replace. And yet yeah, there was still no audio, that's good. This is one of the cases where we're happy that we still have the failure mode. You might remember that we've had this failure mode before so we know how to handle it. I'm going to play some audio of a game loading into the Mickey and ports. There it is, nice waveform. I'm going to check the left hand side of D9 and um, it doesn't look so good. I'm also going to check the pins on TR7 and it's also going to not look so good. Let's have a look at the schematic. Notice D9 and TR7 in the middle there. Um, TR7's collector is actually fed with 9 volts, not 5 volts. I think it's an error on this schematic. Um, here's our waveform going in of our game loading. And here's what I measured all over the center of the circuit there around D9 and TR7. Just low level noise. Although the 9 volt supply was good. I'm going to check TR7 and D9. Um, it seems obvious that they've taken a hit when whatever happened, happened. The easiest way to tackle this for me will be to start by replacing TR7. I've got this old knackered donor board. I'm going to salvage the transistor out of that, pop it into our board and hopefully our sound will return. Okay, here we go, fingers crossed. Nope, still not working. Okay, let's look at D9 this time. That's a 1N4148 diode and I've got a bag of new ones, thankfully. So let's pop one of them in, see what happens.
Drum roll, please. Ten points to the first person who can name the game. Okay, standard business now, let's change the capacitors. I always say this, but try to use good quality capacitors like Bichet's. Um, use axial capacitors, please. I hate seeing radial capacitors all bent on the speckies. And um, try to get blue ones if you want to retain the original look. You've noticed that I've got it stood up in a vise, that's just personal preference really. I guess it's not very conventional, but it seems to work quite well for me. Okay, lovely, that's looking great. Um, one last important job is to put a heatsink on the ULA, try and help it live a long and happy life. This isn't essential, the process carries some risk, but if you're competent with desoldering and soldering, then there's no harm in doing it. Attempting to destructively remove the socket to speed things up, but I have pulled tracks doing that before, so I do recommend taking your time and waggling it out like this. And out it comes. Lovely. That's come out pretty well, nice and clean. Uh, the socket's actually in really good condition, I could probably even reuse that if I'm getting desperate, don't have any new ones. And another excuse, let's get the microscope out. I'm going to clean up these joints because there's little bits of solder sticking out inside them. Make sure our ULA goes in without any resistance. I like to solder these old delicate chips in in a sort of crisscross pattern, trying not to overheat one particular corner of the chip. Right, we're nearly there. I'm just going to plug it in, make sure I haven't broken anything in desocketing the ULA. And next job is to stick the heatsink on. I'm going to use double sided thermal tape to stick it to the ULA. Last but not least, I did mention the edge connector needed cleaning. I'm going to use this fiberglass pen, give it a good scrub. That's lovely, look how shiny it is now. And that's it. No composite mod on this one by request of the owner. So all that's left to do now is test it. I'm going to let it run a soak test for a good few hundred iterations. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and share with your friends if you think they'd be interested too.